Hi, my name is Mark, and I'm the Control Systems Officer for FRC Team 1712, also known as Dogma. And in this video, we're going to be discussing how we can use a CAN bus per the ISO 11898 standards to communicate with all of our devices on our robot. And I'll also be explaining how you can implement it on your own robot and what are some do's and don'ts uh, for doing so. So let's get started. So first, what is a bus? Well, a bus is a network electrical communication along a shared circuit meaning that we can have a single circuit, a single uh, set of wires, and that allows us to communicate with all of our different electrical components. Uh, CAN in particular stands for Controller Area Network, and in this case, the ISO 11898 format is a protocol by which we can communicate with these particular devices. What could those devices be? Well, that could be uh, your power distribution hub, uh, if you're using the one from REV, or if you're using the one from CTRE, like we are currently, it would be the PDP, Power Distribution Panel. Uh, if your robot has an NI Robo Rio, that could be communicated uh, with uh, using CAN. Uh, also, electronic speed controllers, things like Spark Maxes from Rev uh, or uh, Talon SRXs or Victors from CTRE. Any electronic speed controllers that allow us to control our motors, those can uh, mostly be wired over CAN. And I'll be demonstrating this today. Also, uh, devices such as uh, pneumatic control modules or pneumatic hubs, depending on which manufacturer you get them from, those are also communicable, uh, communicable over uh, CAN wire as well. So now I'll be giving you a demonstration of how uh, you can do this uh, to your electrical board. Okay, so now here I have an example of a CAN bus that we would use on our robot. This is uh, just kind of a bare bones setup. On one end here, we have our PDP power distribution panel from uh, CTRE. Uh, if you were using the Rev product, you'd be using the power distribution hub. On the other end here, we have a Robo Rio from National Instruments. And uh, between them, we have this single, what we like to call the trunk, if we're thinking of this as a tree. This would be the trunk. This is the main uh, central can wire, you could say, connecting the PDP and the Robo Rio. So to attach these, uh, to connect these devices together, you can take your can wire, it consists of two wires, the green and the yellow. Uh, the green wire is known as the CAN low signal, CAN L, and the yellow wire is known as the CAN high signal, or CAN H. Uh, fun mnemonic device to remember these is that the green wire is uh, green like the grass on the ground, therefore it's low, and the yellow wire is uh, yellow like the sun in the sky, meaning it's high. So that's kind of fun. Uh, in order to attach these, you can strip off the ends of the wires and attach these ferrule connectors, crimp them on so that it's nice and secure. And then you can take these and insert them into the CAN ports of your desired device. In this case, on the PDP, it makes it nice and easy. We have these ports here that are labeled, even color-coded. Make sure you put the right one into the right slot. Other devices might not be color-coded, but usually they'll say CAN H or CAN L, and you can just put those in accordingly. I've already put these in here on the Robo Rio. Uh, in this case, we can use uh, a Wago or any other uh, type of flathead screwdriver, angled or otherwise. Uh, to eject these ferrule connectors, and that will allow you to move them at your pleasure. For now, I'll keep those in, though. So we have our central branch connecting the NI Robo Rio and the CTRE PDP. And coming off of it, we have all of these uh, T connectors here, these red and black T connectors. And uh, you can see that in this case, this one is connected to both the yellow and green wires. It's making electrical contact with them and it's connecting them electrically with these respectively yellow and green wires. These wires are connected to each of these electronic speed controllers. In this case, I have a Talon SRX here, a Spark Max here from Rev, and uh, another Talon SRX. By using these T connectors, we have effectively created a tree of all these devices. The main branches between the PDP and the Robo Rio, all these branches are coming off these individual devices. Now, one thing that's important to acknowledge is that some of the devices that you may be using on your CAN bus, such as a SparkMax motor controller, for example, as you see in this image, come manufactured with two CAN wire leads uh, uh, baked into them. Even though in this case, we're only using one of them uh, to attach that uh, SparkMax to the central trunk of our CAN bus. And that's indicated by the uh, sky blue uh, outlined wire on the right of the screen. But that means that we still have this uh, magenta or purple highlighted one on the left here that we aren't using. It's not currently serving a function. However, um, it, there are certain designs in which case uh, it, you will need to use both wires. And we'll see an example of that later. But if you are using a design in which you are only using one of those wires, the first thing you want to make sure you do is that for the wire that you are not using, you're securing it and making sure that it's not going to get in the way. 
So in this image, you can see that we've used a zip tie. Uh, we've just pulled it around that wire and looped it around so that it won't get in the way of any chains or gearboxes, anything that it could get caught in, and in general to keep it a little more neat. Now, we are just using a zip tie here because it's a practice robot and we may decide to use that Spark Max or something else in the future, or we might decide to change the configuration of our CAN bus in the future. But if you are sure that you are only going to be using that one wire, the uh, light blue one, then it is generally advisable to simply just cut off that other magenta wire. Uh, if you are sure that you're not gonna use it and uh, you're not gonna change your CAN bus configuration. That'll just keep make sure your electrical board isn't cluttered, everything's nice and organized, uh, there's no confusion as to which wire is supposed to be plugged in where. Um, and and in, in general, it just makes it less likely for the parts of your electrical board to potentially cause uh, interference with the mechanical components of your robot. So uh, the name of the game is, uh, if you might be using it later, you use a zip tie, or tape, adhesive device, Velcro, strap, whatever you need to keep it safe and secure. Um, but if you're sure you're not going to use it, uh, go ahead and cut it off. And now back to the rest of the tutorial. Now... One of the reasons why we use the PDP and RoboRio as the ends of our um, CAN bus here is uh, because they both come with integrated 120 ohm resistors. Now, uh, that is not a necessity. You could just put an electronic speed controller as the end of your bus and maybe put the RoboRio somewhere in the middle and have your central branch be going between the PDP and, let's say, a Town SRX. You could do that, but then this Town SRX doesn't necessarily have 120 ohm uh, resistor integrated with it. The RoboRio does. And one of the necessities for when you're creating a uh, CAN bus is that both ends must, must, must have a 120 ohm resistor on either side. If it doesn't have one integrated in the device, you would have to use an external resistor, uh, which you can do. However, just uh, that's another thing that could fail. So we like to do it between the PDP and the RoboRio. If you want to check if your device has a 120 ohm resistor integrated inside it, uh, I encourage you to check out the device uh, manual for that particular product uh, and uh, read up on that to see whether your device could function without an external resistor as one of the bookends of your CAN bus. So you'll notice that instead of just connecting one device to the next device to the next device to the next device to the last device is that we created a tree here rather than just a single linear chain. The reason for that is this cuts down majorly on the amount of failure points that our system can have. If, for example, one of these wires were to have an electrical failure or if one of these connectors were to fail, that would only black out one branch of the tree. For example, let's say this, uh, this T-connector failed. That means that we would not be receiving an electrical signal through this CAN wire, and therefore this Talon SRX wouldn't be functioning properly. So we might lose one motor, but the rest of the system can still function properly. Now, if instead we were to have a uh, configuration like the one you're looking at on your screen right now, uh, then... The problem would be is that if we, if any single one of those connections is interrupted or uh, fails in some way, then all of a sudden an entire side of your circuit could be deprived of an electrical connection and therefore not allowed to function. Also remember that both ends of the circuit have to have 120 ohm resistors. So if all of a sudden we have a break in the middle of our CAN bus uh, and one side can no longer communicate, then that means that in that middle, we then have two electrical ends uh, that are exposed and they do not have resistors on them. So that's why we ch choose to use this design instead. Although it can still fail at certain points, namely these T-clips uh, or at connections to the controllers themselves, so that's rather rare. If that does happen, which is relatively unlikely, if that does happen, it does not sacrifice the um, functionality of the entire CAN bus as a whole. So that's why we elect to choose this design. We encourage you to uh, choose a tree design similar to this as well for your CAN bus. Okay, so now that you know how to wire a functioning CAN bus, uh, this allows you to do a lot of really cool things with your robot. Many of these are very useful. Uh, for example, you can take, if you have some Spark Maxes on your robot and they're connected to a CAN bus, you can use a USB-C cable to plug into any one of those Spark Maxes. You can plug the other end of your cable into a programming laptop. And in doing so, you can then download the software from uh, that product manufacturer. In this case, since it's a Spark Max, we can go to the Rev website and download the Spark Max client or the Rev hardware client. That allows us to configure uh, these Spark Maxes. We can download the latest firmware, make sure it's up to date. Uh, we can also even test these motors by sending them values. We can change um, 
the, whether they're inverted or not. There are lots of these useful tools that allow us to test these Spark Maxes without having to write code for them. So that's a pretty uh, easy tool to use. It's very convenient, and it's all possible because of the canvas. In fact, on our team the other day, we were trying to uh, pinpoint whether one of our speed controllers was malfunctioning or whether it was a motor problem. And in order to do that, all we had to do was plug into one of our Spark Maxes with the USB-C cable, and then just go through the Rev Hardware client and click on each of the individual speed controllers and practice sending values to them uh, to see whether they would respond properly. And in doing so, we didn't even have to uh, take out the cable and plug it into the different controller. Because they're all connected by a function in CAN bus, uh, we only need to connect to one controller physically via a cable because all of them are communicating uh, via the CAN bus. So that's really how useful a CAN bus can be. So this has been our uh, video CAN bus tutorial. We are Team Dogma 1712. Thank you for watching. Hope you found this video helpful. And good luck implementing your own CAN buses. See you guys in the next video.